And then your mic. Ladies and gentlemen, Skaggs of Outline yeah, Car! Yeah. What's up, dude? Oh, he's bowing to us. Oh. We're not we're worthy. Not worthy. We're, we're the not worthy, worthy ones. Not worthy. Dude, how are you today? We appreciate you joining. I'm good. How are you guys? Excellent, excellent. Chilling, dude. Uh, for those that may not know you, could you please properly introduce yourself? Let us know whereabouts in the world you are and plug or promote anything you'd like. For sure. Uh, my name's Skaggs. I live in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, I sing in the band Outline in Color, and I cultivate medical marijuana for the uh, medical patients in Oklahoma. Let's go. Smoke weed every day. Hell yeah. Have you, when did you first get into cannabis? Uh, what age would you say? Oh, shit. Um, I'd say... I probably smoked for the first time, like right before I graduated high school. Sounds about right. Somewhere in the high school days, that's yeah. usually when I it think went. I was a little late. I was a little later than some of my friends because, like, I thought that it was like a moral thing, you know. But then, like, I found out that like the two smartest people that I knew that were like valedictorian for my high school and like one of the most talented guitar players I knew at the time both smoked, and I was like, "Oh, this shit yeah. can't be that bad if these people are in it." For real, <laughs> hell you yeah! Did, uh, always start out as the vocalist, right? Didn't you start out as a keyboard player? Yeah, I played keys, I played bass, and uh, like three years ago, I moved to vocals. Man, that's like a that's talents. a huge transition though because you carry a lot of like weight on your shoulders so like how does that happen man um man it was just like kind of all of a sudden um the short version of the story is just like we uh we we're booked to do this like tour and an agent that we had been trying to work with like threw us like five dates on the tour and we were like super stoked about it because we we're trying to get him interested in booking us and him um getting us some shows was like kind of like a an indicator that maybe there might be some interest there Ooh. so like it's like a <clears throat> a week before we went on the tour and our old vocalist like hit us up and in, in the dms and was just like uh for personal reasons he couldn't do the tour and Damn. whatever that meant for the for the future man like we just had to deal with it so we were just like, all right, well, at that point in time, like, we weren't trying to, like, change the dynamic up of the band, but, like, um, we didn't want to cancel those shows because the last thing we wanted to do was cancel these shows from this agent that just got us the shows. Back. So long story short, John stepped up and started playing bass and, uh, and singing, and then I stepped up to vocals, and we got through the tour, and it went really smoothly. And uh, after the tour, like uh, our old vocalist kind of like let us know that he wasn't going to be carrying on with us in the future. And mm. at that point, we had like we had gotten through a tour and written a song together um, as that like formation of the group. And uh, we were just like, you know what, like we weren't ready to like hang it up, you know, so we, we decided as a group to keep it going. I love That's it. That's fucking badass. How did you link up with uh, Rated R? This, I know this isn't kind of like what you guys normally sound like, but how did you guys link up and do this one here? Hostage. Dude, this is so crazy. Rated R is like one, one of my, my very, very good friends. Um, basically, um, if you're unfamiliar, I, I was in this uh, EDM group called Cake Up. We did like twerk trap kind of stuff. Hell and, yeah. And uh, I was on tour with uh i was djing for kyle lucas um, nice. okay when we were on, on a slaves tour and um my partner in caked up uh knew that i was on tour obviously and he was friends with rated r like through the internet like they had like facetimed and like worked on some some stuff on facetime and um <clears throat> he like invited him to come out to our orlando show and rated r just like pulled up never meeting us and hung out with me and kyle and we ended up becoming like really good friends and we've worked on a lot of tracks together and I've always tried to help him out with his career before things like things have just very recently started taking off for him. It's been really cool to see happen, but I've been rocking with him since before he could get a show, you know? 
that's cool that you guys are still boys uh, all this time later. I'm gonna play it. Um, we'll actually yeah. play a couple of your guys' songs, and then if you're down, maybe we'll review some bands together and we'll do some trivia. See if we can stump you, dude. That's so nasty. That's nasty. Who's who's a who's an artist <laughs> that you that you haven't had the opportunity to collab with that's on your list? Oh man, shoot. There's so many. I really like collaborating a lot. Um, I I just like I like doing things that are really like people wouldn't expect us to do and things that are like kind of out of character for us. Um, and that's a really tough one. I think it, I, it would really depend on like the genre, I think. How would somebody go about uh, hiring you for your services for, for, for going about a feature? I mean, I, I think I'm on featured X, but like I've never used that to, to book a feature. I usually just like talk to people directly and, um, usually if the song is sick, like it doesn't really take much talking into for me. Like the music speaks a lot. If I'm, if I'm into the song, like I'm all I about like that. it. Uh, Smart. Let's play. Uh, let's... Sure. I haven't got to the place where I'm big enough, where I have to be take con <laughs> concern as to what's a good look for me and what's not a good look for me. It's, if I like the song, I'm into it. That's smart. Indica or Sativa? Indica. How'd you guys link up with uh, with Joey Bradford? Uh, that's a good question. Um, so, like, we have a mutual friend, Sinjin Ayat. Um, I've known for, like, ever. He's actually even managed us at one point in time. And um, at one point in time, I was looking to have Sinjin manage the band again. Um, but he wanted us to find somebody to manage with, like collaboratively, because mm. he's a really busy guy. And um, he knew Joey, and it ended up working out to where me and Sinjin didn't work out management wise again. We're still best friends. I talked to him yesterday, actually. But um, he introduced us to Joey, and um, we, we were out in LA, like doing some stuff a couple of years ago. Joey invited us to come check out his studio. So we came and hung out with him for a while. And about six months later, we flew him out to Nashville and we co wrote some songs with him. And uh, things just kind of naturally grew into a, a, a management kind of scenario, I guess. Um, he was just kind of helping us out with some stuff. And I'd help his clients out with stuff as I was able to. And eventually we just kind of reached a point where we we're like, hey, I guess you're managing our band now. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, he's such a great guy. We had him on the show a while back, and uh, you guys came up, and I was like, "Oh man, I'd love to talk to them." And he was like, "I'll set it up, blah blah blah." And that's how that's how this all came about. But uh, let's play, let's play. That's, eat. Literally, that's why I was like, "No, I'm sorry, I'm sorry." We were we were joking about it earlier today. You're like, "Dude, I don't even know how this got set up," <laughs> and I'm like, "I think Joey did it." Yeah, I, I was like, <laughs> I was looking through my emails and looking through my DMs, and I was just like, "Man, where where did I set this up?" And then you were like, "Oh, it's Joey," and I was like, "Ah." Ah, that was it. <laughs> me, I was like, I'm in, and I forgot about it. <laughs> <laughs> no worries, no worries. Let's play Eat Your Heart Out next. Uh, I think this is probably your guys' most successful song, I would say. Is that fair to say? As far yeah. as, like, what what does this song mean to you personally? It's, it's, uh, it's really funny to me, actually, um, because when we recorded that album, that was the one song that everybody in the band except for me and except for the label and except for our management at the time all everybody in the band wanted us to cut that song from the album no shit wow and yeah and and, and i was i like really stood my ground and was just like you know like at that at that point i didn't want to drop any songs off the album so it was it was less about it being that specific song and more about just cutting any songs but once the label and our management had heard the whole album, we were in agreement that that was like the catchiest, poppiest song on the album. And uh, the band just hated it. <laughs> so it was just really, we grew to love it, you know? Um, but it was just kind of crazy the way that it ended up being so successful. That's why you never see any of my band guys like, like celebrating the mine milestones for that song. <laughs> like when it's like another another million 
plays or whatever. They're like, uh, we're like, we hit three million plays or, or any of that <laughs> shit. Everybody, they, we, the song's kind of funny because we, I, I like playing it. It's a fun song to play live, but um, the rest of the guys are just so burned out on that song. As, as I think every band's biggest song, that's usually the case, but. Skags, before I play it, I, I, I'm going to set but up trivia. It, um, yeah, I'm going to set up some trivia real quick. I need to know, what would you say is your most knowledgeable uh, TV show, uh, movie franchise, anything? Like Star Wars, South Park, it could be anything. I need I need something to work with that I can work the trivia from. Futurama or King of the Hill? Futurama, hell yeah, let's go. Uh, I tried Tony. Definitely a catchy bop. Is that right. beginning fight real or was it like staged? It was definitely staged. <laughs> <laughs> but like they, they, uh, it's Cameron Mizell's girlfriend at the time and our old vocalist. And they like, they got kind of drunk and they went in the studio and there was like some like beer bottles and like a trash can and, and stuff. And uh, they turned off the lights and they just started yelling at each other so that it, <laughs> it would feel like more, more real. And at the end of it, the girl had like tears in her eyes and shit because she was like genuinely freaked out, even though it was supposed to be. <laughs> <laughs> so successful, <laughs> successful recording in that part. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I do want to play Annie so, Social and, and ask you about Patient Sixty. How did how did you guys link up with uh Go with with uh, Patient Sixty Seven and Tom? <laughs> Man, they're just really good at social media, and uh, they. Uh, I like I like bands for music, but like I'm also like a I'm a I'm a business guy. So like when a band's got like a cool marketing thing or like something going for them that's unique, like I, I tend to pay attention to it. And just through music and through like their exploits over the last like few years, they've just kind of got my attention. And uh, Tom reached out to me about doing that cover. Um, and we were just like, hell yeah, dude. Like, you guys are working really hard through the pandemic. We're working really hard through the pandemic. Like, let's do this collab together. And it ended up being really cool. It's the first song that either one of us have ever done that, that got on a XM Octane. I, I didn't even realize it was a cover the first time I heard it until, like, the, my third listen. And someone was like, you yeah. know this is a cover. Like, and I was like, what the? <laughs> hey, yo, what the fuck? <laughs> Your Futurama yeah, trivia. Gosh. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Continue. It's funny. It's funny that you say that because when I went over to CJ, our guitar player's place, to uh, to track the vocals for that, John, our other vocalist, like came in and was like, "Yeah, I've been uh, I've been writing some stuff for that collab that we're doing." And I was like, "What are you talking about?" I was like, "Did you like write like a like a bridge or like a part?" Like, like I, I, I was confused. And uh, yeah, it, long story short, he he also thought that that was an original, and he had like started writing something to it. And I was like, Nah, dude, it's the, <laughs> it's the, it's the original. It, yeah, because it, it has like its own kind of different feel and flavor that makes it just so like stand out and different than a normal cover. But um, okay, Futurama trivia. Totally. Here we go. <laughs> I need you to tell me the name of Fry's brother. What is the name of Fry's brother? I'll give you a hint. It starts with a Y. It starts with a P. Why oh, Yancey? Yancey is correct. Give me a hell yeah. Oh, he got it. Well done. Okay. Yancey is correct. We'll see what the wheel lands on when we Man, play. Man, I had a better question. I would have been, what was Fry's dog's name? Uh, oh, that... man, I could almost get, I could almost get that one. I can I can even like remember the ep episode where they like have the, they have in the Dolomite. And, yeah, what was Fry's dog's name, Holly? I, I don't know the answer to that one. It's not one of the I questions. I don't remember. Actually, my my wife can't remember either. We we both are avid uh, Futurama watchers. And you said King of the Hill too. I'm that. gonna I'm gonna go King of the Hill next. King of the Hill next. <laughs> Certified. Banger. Certified banger for sure. Attempt number two to stump. Here we go. King of the Hill trivia. What was the name of Hank Hill's guitar? Oh, fuck. 
What is the name of Hank Hill's guitar? Man. I, I can't remember. That's I want to say Bertha, but I just know that that's wrong. Oh, man, you are close, though. <laughs> really? You are close. It does start with a B. Chad wants to know how you know Eric from Mosaic. Uh, I used to live in Denver, and uh, I used to chill with Eric a little bit and his band. I think I've even played some shows with them. They're super good. Oh, yeah. Uh, and he, he makes really cool music videos, too. Betsy. He's just a generally smart person. Betsy was the answer. Um, so guys, what, what can we what can we expect what can we expect from you guys for the rest of uh, the rest of 2022? <coughs> um, well, we just finished recording an album. Hell yeah, that's pretty sweet. <laughs> um, we just confirmed the biggest tour we've ever booked before. Nice. And it's I not announced yet. We're gonna put the album out. It's not announced uh, yet. Well, the tour is announced, but, but the tour is announced, but we're not announced on it yet. Okay. Um, so what's but, the tour? Uh, <laughs> I can't say. Otherwise, Come on, bro. Have have her, her have the wife write it down on paper again. So then you didn't say it. She she told us. Uh, I wish. Fair I could, enough. But it's, Fair it's enough. gonna Loophole. be really sweet. Loophole. It's gonna be really sweet. Um, that's exciting that's awesome but uh, we're gonna we're gonna put that we're gonna put the album out on that tour which is like in all of our years of being a band we've never really got to put out an album on a proper tour before so cool can, can you give us a, a timetable of when you possibly expect that album to be out summertime we'll winter time singles pretty soon we'll start dropping singles pretty soon but the album's gonna come out in the fall cool Hell yeah. Looking uh, up tours in the fall. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's play let's play two bands that have uh, have been submitted to us today. So what we do this four times a week, Skags, and, and we we play music of any genre from anywhere in the entire world. Half the time we don't even know what we're gonna hear ahead of time. Um example right now. This is Gene LaCroix. I would say I like that dude's vibrato. Yeah, that was, was what I was gonna say. The vibrato was on All point. Right, mind, take a like, bro. Uh, what's something that you jam in your personal time that we wouldn't expect you to listen to? Um, I don't really listen to a lot of like core music, really. So, probably be surprised by most of the things that I listen to. But um, I like hip hop a lot, like a lot of rap. Um, but like I grew up on like West Coast, like Bay Area hip hop, which is unlike. Yeah, Mac Dre represent. Four day water, four day water. Mac Dre is a fucking. Oh, he died way too soon. Totally. Um, <clears throat> but I'm I'm into like, I don't know. It's weird. Like, like I like I like the stuff that I probably shouldn't like, as well as the stuff that's like lyrical and and uh, thought provoking. You know. Like I'll listen to some some hype shit just to listen to it, even though it's like trash. <laughs> <laughs> no, the hype movement never died. What's that? I said the hypey movement never died. Never. I agree. We'll be getting, we'd be getting Andre caked Nicotino. up left and right around here. But uh, I, was, I usually bump Andre Nicotino when I'm doing dishes. He's a good uh, doing chores artist. Yeah, there you go. dude, that, that one album that he did with Mac Dre, The Tale of Two Andreas, that was... Yeah, that was awesome. really clever shit. Skags, what's the, what's the worst gig story ever? Everything went wrong at this particular cool. show that you played. <laughs> oh, there's so many. <laughs> oh, man. I'm trying to think of a really good one. Um... Oh, man. I mean, we've definitely had, like, the typical gigs where, like, you know, we got to chase down the promoter to get paid or, like, apply some sort of pressure to, to get paid. But we've had some, like, really weird instances. Like, it doesn't even really have much to do with the show. But at the end of the show, like, somebody at the show was like, hey, you can stay with us. And we're like, all right, cool. 
So we roll up to these people's places. I think we had like a day off or something the next day. So they're going to let us stay there for two nights. And um, we get there and the, it's like a couple and they're like trying to, they're, it became evident that they were swingers. <laughs> Hell yeah. Right. And, and they were like trying to give us like massages and, 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 and weird stuff. <laughs> and um, yeah, that was, pro- that was probably one of the weirder occasions. I can't, I can't think of like one where like, like uh, there's tons of like technical difficulty shows that we've had where like everything falls apart technically. But I mean, to be honest, I try to just like put those out of my mind entirely. So when I'm trying to think of them, it's kind of hard. <laughs> you just had to just move on on to the I next mean, one. Transitioning from like bass to vocal, did you have to like change up like your whole like mindset and regimen and like learn to like maybe party less or do certain things less so you can like maintain vocal power and like pull that off? I've never really been much of a partier. I've really just, just smoked. Um, but I've, I've always like been in like a closet vocalist. Like I've always done backup vocals and stuff and I've had like side projects and shit throughout the years. So like, it was kind of like getting called up to the big leagues, I guess. Not, not mm-hmm. really. I mean, that makes it sound like we're a big band. No, it makes you know sense. What I mean, like, I get it. Uh, but, uh, I was terrified. Like the first, like several shows, like it was like, I had trouble sleeping the night before and like was anxious the whole day up until like pretty much the minute we started performing. But every time we started performing, it would just go away. So I just like, that's what practice says to fight, fight that. Yeah. Totally. The butterflies go out um, the window. Hell yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I, I you don't practice and they never go away. Yeah. Then they don't. Yeah. Uh, Chad has a final question for you. Uh, they want to know how you linked up with dropout Kings. Oh man, that's actually pretty cool. Um, so <clears throat> when we put out our self-titled album, we got to to do a headlining tour to support the release of it. And it was kind of like, again, we're not a very big band, but it was the first time that we had been like big enough that we could send out for submissions for uh, a tour, like for support. And uh, our agent at the time was like, you know, who do you want to tour with? Like, who make we were like making these like theoretical packages, and uh, the band like just genuinely really liked Dropout. We didn't know them as people. We just like saw that they were doing something really fresh, and uh, you know, we just recognized that like we'd known them for a long time, like indirectly from the other bands that they had played in and like just seeing them in local bands like touring and even other touring bands um and uh yeah they we we were real hyped on them and when it came time to send out offers for our tour we sent them like a direct support offer to us and they were like as stoked to tour with us as we were to have them so it was like one of those things where like they listened to us back in the day and it was like cool for us to like connect and We've been tight ever since. We just played a show with them like last week in Tulsa, and it was super good to see all those guys. They're really awesome. Awesome. And I think that since I've since I became a vocalist uh, in the band, um, I've I've always I grew up like fifty percent hip hop, fifty percent metal. So it's like even though the band has somewhat of a sound, I've kind of like had to infuse some of myself into the band, you know. So naturally, some of those hip hop. Hot things just start coming I mean, it's got to come off know? natural to you, you know? Exactly. I wasn't trying, to, like, I didn't want to. If we were going to carry on, I wasn't going to do something where, like, I was trying to be in somebody else's box or something. Like, the Facts. only way I was down was if I could do it my own way. Because it's like, you know, we're real deep in the game to be having a, a, a vocalist change, but everybody in the band has been in the band since the first day that we were a band. So it's like, it's like, it's authentic in that it's us. It's just a different presentation, you know? I love that. Uh, so guys, we got time to play one last song. What would you prefer that we play? Anything in your entire catalog? Dang! Man, I like I like showing Ghost of You to people because I feel like it's like the perfect song for people that they've never heard us before and they want to tune in now. Like, it, there's lots of old songs that I could tune you into but like if you're trying to get in tune with what we're doing now i think that that's a nice song that's got a balance of the softer stuff that we do with also the heavier stuff 
Outline and color, Ghost of You. Every song we play today of your guys is absolutely fantastic, for real. Really, really good stuff, Aww, dude. Thanks, man. Man, this is a lot. Of, you're, you're very welcome, and and thank you so much for taking some time of your day to hang out with us, man. We really appreciate it. Yeah, of course. Plug or promote anything one more time if you'd like. Send us on out. Sure. Uh, well, like I said, uh, I cultivate medical marijuana here in Oklahoma. My company, uh, Washers Oklahoma, is dropping our debut uh, line tomorrow. In, uh, tomorrow. With a couple of really awesome. Hell yeah. Hey man, hell yeah. But uh, yeah, if you're in Oklahoma and you have a med medical card, uh, check my socials and you'll see where you can pick that stuff up. That is awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, Skags of Outline and Color. Hey man, hell yeah. Thank you so much again, dude. Have a fantastic rest of your day. Achoo. Cheers. Achoo. Bless, Bless you. you. <laughs> Thank you. Shit. Bye. <laughs> Cheers, brother. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day, man. Stay safe. And we look forward to uh, the new music coming out. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. I'll talk to you guys soon. Cheers.